When this broke man sold his grandma's old blanket, he had no idea it would make him a millionaire. It's fair to say that things had not been going too well in the life of a California man, Lauren Kritzer, back in 2011. A serious auto smash had changed his life forever, and subsequently, money was short, to say the least. So much so that Kreitzer had been forced to lodge with his three children at their grandparents. Then one day, he watched an episode of a popular TV program, Antiques Roadshow. What he saw would result in the most dramatic change in fortunes and alter his life completely once again. Up until 2007, Kreitzer had enjoyed a successful career, working as a self-employed carpenter, and he was well able to support his family. But he was caught up in a car crash that year, which resulted in a complicated injury to his foot. Kreitzer's wound just refused to heal, despite a year-long stay in hospital. His injury developed an infection, and eventually doctors gave the woodworker some terrible news. Kreitzer recollected the devastating conversation he had with his doctors in an interview with cable broadcaster CNBC in November of 2017. He recalled, I kept trying to do my best, and finally it got so bad they said, we have to cut your foot off. Now disabled, Kreitzer found himself unable to continue his freelance career and was left unemployed with no income stream. Although he had gone through the trauma of losing a foot, Kreitzer's initial application for disability benefits was turned down. Furthermore, the California native had nothing in the bank and was now facing ruin. At this point, Kreitzer had to send his three children to live with their grandparents on the other side of the country in Louisiana. This, of course, was a heartbreaking decision for any father to have to make. I mean, what do you do? Kreitzer asked the cameras of CNBC. I had kids to take care of. No money, you know? Nothing saved up or nothing like that. He remembered of his dire financial situation. After many delays, at last, disability welfare payments started to come on stream. But it proved to be little more than a trickle. Kreitzer was awarded just $839 a month. Luckily, a friend agreed to rent him a shack on land the Good Samaritan owned just outside of the city of Palmdale, near Los Angeles, California. A grateful Kreitzer moved in with his then-girlfriend and future wife Lisa, but even that basic accommodation cost $700 a month, leaving Kreitzer with less than a couple of hundred to live on. Lisa was able to contribute a little, but not enough to make much of a difference. It was rough, Kreitzer lamented. I mean, we could literally go to Costco and get a Costco brand hot dog and Coke, because they were $1.50. Thankfully, the couple were able to afford a television because along came the day in late 2011 when Kreitzer was tuned in to PBS. His interest was piqued by an item on the channel Antiques Roadshow. In one particular segment, the show's expert appraiser of antiques was a man called Don Ellis. He owned a Native American art gallery and was a collector of First Nation artifacts. A participant in the episode, Ted Koontz, from Tucson, Arizona, had brought along an antique blanket for Ellis to look over. Kunst knew little about the blanket apart from the fact that he believed it to be Navajo in origin. He claimed the bed cover had been given to a relative of his by Kit Carson, the legendary frontiersman who died in 1868. Ellis, however, immediately recognized the object for what it was. He was delighted to inform Kunz that he was the owner of a superb and rare example of a first-phase Navajo blanket. In the time-honored tradition of the Antiques Roadshow, Kuntz was astonished at the news and then overjoyed when he learned of the piece's value. Ellis unhesitatingly put a price on the modest-looking blanket of up to $500,000. Now the thing that made Kreitzer sit up and pay attention was that this was all very close to home. The blanket on TV looked amazingly similar to one that the former carpenter had in his closet. He had inherited the item only to store it away and then think little more about it. Kreitzer told CNBC about what happened next. I paused the program and I went and got the blanket and I'm sitting there holding it, he remembered. I'm lining up the lines on the TV with this blanket, seeing if they match. This guy is on TV, the appraiser says, 300,000 to 500,000. So I'm thinking maybe this one is worth five to 10 grand. Kreitzer had come by the bed linen several years previously. After the death of his grandmother, he had arrived at his deceased relative's home to pick up some books that she had promised him. Apart from that, he claimed there were very slim pickings. He recalled, Everything was already pillaged through by my sister and mother, but there was one last overlooked bag to be investigated. Folded inside the bag were two blankets which had been passed down by his grandmother's mother. 
Kreitzer's sister immediately took one blanket, leaving the other, of what she thought was inferior quality, lying like a rag on the floor. According to Kreitzer, I said, what are you going to do with that? She said, I don't want that, that dirty old thing. I picked it up, put it in my closet, and there it sat for seven years. After seeing the expensive find on Antiques Roadshow, Kreitzer was spurred into action and took his bed cover to various local antique stores. But none of the shop owners were impressed, telling him that this was an everyday Mexican blanket with no value. But after months, finally one antique dealer advised him to try John Moran Auctioneers in Monrovia, California, which was known for dealing in Native American items. So, Kreitzer took his grandmother's heirloom along to an open appraisal day at John Moran Auctioneers. The founder's son, Jeff Moran, was on hand to take a look at the item. Kreitzer filled in Morin on the blanket's long history in the family. Apparently, Kreitzer's great-great-grandfather, John Chantland, a Dakota trader back in the 19th century, had been the first owner of the bed linen. As a result of the consultation, Morin told Kreitzer that his blanket was likely to attract offers of about $200,000 at auction. The antiques dealer arranged for the item to be listed as a lot at the next event held at the auctioneers. But as we have seen, Kreitzer was in dire financial straits and truly desperate for money and he wasn't sure that he could wait. Subsequently, in a scene perhaps more reminiscent of a dodgy drug deal, Moran met his client in a Pizza Hut parking lot and handed over an envelope stuffed with $9,000 cash. With two weeks to go, that was enough to keep Kreitzer on board until the day of the auction. The John Moran Auctioneers event finally came around in early June 2012. Bidding for the blanket began under its value at $150,000. Perhaps this was the reason the offers climbed briskly in increments of $50,000 until it reached a remarkable $1 million. After this, the bids advanced swiftly by $100,000 each time. Kreitzer was in the room with Lisa and their emotion on their faces as the price increased to dizzying heights at such a rapid rate was a sight to see. The bidding was indeed fast and furious. In fact, the entire process lasted just 77 seconds until the final bid was accepted with a bang of the auctioneer's hammer. The winning telephone bid was an astonishing $1.5 million. And extraordinarily, the buyer was none other than Don Ellis, the very man that Kreitzer had watched on the Antiques Roadshow valuing another Navajo blanket. A thoroughly stunned Kreitzer's next move was to try and get his head together. After the auction, he took himself off to a hotel and spent five days alone in order to let the good news sink in. After fees, the former disability claimant would have $1.3 million coming his way. Sadly, he also started to hear from relatives looking for a payout. Sadly, his own sister threatened to sue him, but thankfully, she later thought better of it. Despite that unpleasantness, Kreitzer was now able to enjoy his money. He said goodbye to the shack and bought two houses, one for Lisa and himself to live in and the other to provide rental income. He also splashed out on a 2012 Dodge Challenger, a Harley-Davidson motorcycle, and took a family cruise down to Mexico. But the canny ex-carpenter also wanted to build a comfortable future. And so Kreitzer put some of his newfound wealth into stocks and bonds, and all thanks to his grandmother's blanket, which ended up covering him for life.